So thanks to I want to thank the organizers to be here, and uh, this is a really uh, important place for my uh, life as a mathematician because uh, uh, when I, I was a student, I come here several times, and it was very important to me to participate to this school. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk about uh, finiteness of uh, attractors for piecewise, not only for piecewise, but for piecewise uh, C2 maps of the interval. So this is a joint work with uh, Paul Brandão and Jacob Alis. And uh, so let me, uh, let me draw a picture. So we want to work in the interval. We can assume that this is the interval 0, 1. It's not a problem. And we want to study how many attractor maps like that can have. Here, we are going to allow a salt map has discontinuous. So first uh, thing, we want to define what is a tractor. For, for me, in this talk, uh, a tractor, an attractor will be a compact set, and we are going to assume that uh, the map is transitive in this compact set. This is not uh, the, the only one definition of a tractor. Maybe uh, it's very common to assume Milner definition, but in this, this setting, all the attractor will be uh, transitive. And uh, uh, important thing, the important things of, the of an attractor is to have a big ba basin of attraction. The basin of attraction is the set of points which in the future is going to be approximated be in to the, the attractor. That is, the omega limit of these points is gone inside the attractor. Is that the, the, the future orbit accumulates in the attractor. Okay, so but uh, a big basin of attractor you can you can define it in several uh, ways, and uh, the most common is to have a positive Lebesgue measure. But you can also define uh, say that a, a, a basin of attraction is big in the topological sense, but I'm not going to talk much about it here. Okay. So what's the, what is our problem? The first one is how many attack, attractor a map of the interval with some regularity can have, OK? <coughs> so it can be 0. It can, we can have a map without attractors. It can be infinite. This is the kind of question we want to talk about. And also, uh, even if, if we have uh, attractors. Maybe the the union of the basin of attractor can uh, not cover all the interval. So uh, the second natural question is is that uh, the union of of, uh, of the basin of attractor has full a bag measure. And there are also the problem of classify attractors. Okay. So. Uh, a first result in, in that uh, set, and you can, you can think about the result of uh, Singer, and it's a very old result, okay? And he say that uh, he, he gives condition so that uh, a map the, uh, only can have a finite number of periodic attractor. So to, to do that, he uh, introduced in this context of uh, uh, one dimension dynamics, the Schwarzen derivative. This comes from, this operator comes from uh, the complex dynamics, okay? So this is the definition of what is the uh, Schwarzen derivative. For, look that the, we have to deal with uh, the third derivative, so the map has to be at least C3 to use this for, to use this definition. <laughs> And he say that, uh, okay, if you, this, in this case, it's a C3 map. If you look for, if you, your map has negative trust and derivative, the, the number of uh, uh, critical points, 
okay, bound the number of periodic attractor. Okay. So, uh, let me talk about a little bit for the simplest uh, case of uh, one dimensional dynamics that is not uh, uh, linear. So, you can think about, uh, okay, linear maps, very easy in, in, to study in one dimensional dynamica, dynamicals, but uh, uh, the second case is a map with uh, a critical point. For instance, a uh, quadratic map, something like that. Okay, so this, the unimodal maps, okay, it's a kind of generalizer of this, the quadratic map. We assume this map has only one critical point, and uh, uh, we are going to assume also that the, the boundary of this, of the interval is invariant by F, that is in this case. And uh, this is not a problem, it's only a, 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 we can normalize the map like that, okay? And uh, a very formal example of this kind of map is the logic family. I write down the formula there, okay? So what we can talk about uh, this, uh, the number of attractors for this kind of map. map. Of course, single maps that say that uh, uh, this map can have at most, if you, we use direct this, uh, form three uh, periodic attract, but indeed because of the, the, the zero is a fixed point and something like that, you can uh, conclude that this kind of map has uh, one, typically at most one periodic attract. So, but uh, the first, first big result in this area about uh, say, uh, about describe the, the Period, the attractor for the unimodal map, the S unimodal map, was this result for Block and Liu Beach. Okay. And uh, the, uh, the, the, it's a bit, conf a bit confused, the, the date of this result, because it's, uh, in that time the, the uh, Soviet Union don't talk <laughs> much with the Occident, so it's uh, okay. But, uh, the point is, uh, they show that, uh, first of all, S unimodal map always have a single attractor, okay? This single attractor can be a periodic orbit, a cycle of interval, and also a counter set. If this map is the attractor is a counter set, so this, the attractor will be exactly the orbit, the omega limit of the critical point. Indeed, not only the omega limit, in this case, is indeed the closure of the orbit. In this case, the omega of x is. So it's a, it's a very precise result. And uh, <coughs> more than that, the base of attractor, the base of attraction of this, the attractor cover Lebesgue almost ever, Lebesgue almost all the interval. So, but uh, here uh, I introduce uh, the, the non-flatness property, and uh, being non-flat means that uh, nearby the critical point, the maps look like a kind of polynomial. So, what is, a, is a, let me show an, exam, an example of a, non, of a flat map. This is a flat map, the student can write down this and check that the, the Schwarzschild derivative is like that. So this is an example of a flat map. But here you are not going to deal with this kind of map. We are going to study the non-flat one. So look in the flat uh, case, the names say that is near the critical point is almost a, a constant. Okay. So. So what is a cycle of interval? A cycle of interval is a, a union of closed interval and the map, the map uh, restricted to the union is transitive. 
So you can go back to the theorem and say, so this is a union of transitive, in, or the attractor is a union of transitive interval, or the attractor is a periodic orbit, or the attractor is a counter set that is the omega limit of the critical points. It's a very precise result. Okay. So, uh, to say the, the next result, I'm going to introduce the, the notion of multimodal map. It's a general, generalization of unimodal map. It's a map of the, in, the interval. And uh, what we are assuming that all the critical, with a finite number of uh, critical points, and we are assuming that all the critical points is a maximum, a local maximum, local minimum. In this case, we are not allowed that the maps has some criticality like that. This is forbidden. So maps like, uh, we are not going to talk about map like that, OK? Uh, so s model map is a map with uh, this kind of uh, critical point. It's called turning point. And with negative Schwarzen derivative. So, uh, Bloch and, and Lubit also uh, have a, a similar result uh, about uh, multimodal, uh, similar to the unimodal one. In this case, uh, we can uh, decompose the interval in a, a finite number of sets. The set will be the basin of an attraction of uh, a finite number of attractors. And this has full bag measure. That is, almost every point of the interval goes to one of the, uh, is going to be attracted for one of these uh, attractors. And, uh, uh, but I, I didn't mention in the one model case, but I, I'm going to mention here that we have for Lebesgue almost every point in the basin this very strong property that uh, not only the, the omega limits the points is attract to the attractor, this is the typical, but not only this. The omega limit will be exactly the attractor. So this is a very uh, interesting uh, result. And uh, so the, the attractor, again, can be only a periodic attractor, a cycle of interval, and a counter set. And in this case, also, the counter set must be uh, the omega limit of some critical point. So, but uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit about map with discontinuities. So we are going to, for now, for now uh, stay a little bit more with the condition of negative Schwarzen derivatives. And uh, one point is, uh, okay, you can think maps with any kind of discontinuity, but uh, like that. But uh, a very important type of discontinuity is when the discontinuity is all, all same, at the same time a critical point. This uh, kind of discontinuities appear naturally for flows, okay? And uh, when you are, you, you can, okay, reduce some uh, flows to, to a one dimension, to start some flows to start a one dimension dynamics, and so this kind of, uh, uh, discontinuities appear. And uh, uh, this indeed is the most difficult type of this, uh, discontinuity. When the discontinuity is not associated to a critical point, it's not so, so difficult to deal with. So, and uh, the simplest case of this kind of map is the, the contracting Lorentz map. It's a map like that. This map has only one discontinuity. And uh, this, conti this, this continuity is associated to the critical point. This is a nearby C for the left and for the right. The derivative, the derivative is 
close and close to zero, okay? And uh, let's also assume the negative Schwarzschild derivative for this map. So, uh, last week in the Martin's, Martin Martin's uh, lectures, uh, they talk about uh, wonder intervals. And uh, so the under, wonder intervals plays a very important role when you want to study uh, uh, one dimensional maps, okay? And uh, what is a wonder interval? It's an interval that is not, in, is not uh, the, the interval does not intersect the base of attraction of, uh, of a periodic attractor. I, let me, I don't remember if I define, I can go back. Okay, uh, uh, if not, I define. So, uh, let me define this on a notation. Let uh, this double B be the union, the union of the basin of attraction for, a, for all periodic attractors. Okay. So uh, uh, a wonder interval does not intersect uh, uh, the set, the double B, and uh, does not intersect the orbit of it, does not intersect the critical point. So if you, if you restrict, restrict uh, the iterate of, for any J, to the, the wonder interval, this is uh, homeomorphism. Okay, and uh, the, the important properties, the, the, the iterate of the, the uh, wonder interval does not intersect each other. Okay, so it's not that the iterate of it does not intersect the, the interval itself, but does not intersect Two over two does not intersect. Okay, one of the main ingredients to prove uh, to start uh, the number of attractors in, in, in uh, to make the classifications in several pro property of attractor for a one-dimensional map is to prove to understand the wonder interval and in most of cases to try to prove that there are no wonder interval. But uh, these are. Uh, I write down, uh, I summarize some result about uh, the existence of uh, wonder interval. We can s the first one is very well known, the, the Denjoa result about uh, no, the non-existence of wonder interval in the cycle. And after that, for SUN model map was a result of Guggenheim. And the UACOS also has a result for a map of the cycle with uh, critical points. So this is different for this one because this, uh, the map is a different form of him, it is not. And uh, for, for s mood model maps, uh, little bit, so that the non-existence of uh, existence of wonder interval for s mood model map. And uh, Sebastian in Wellington for C2 unimodal map, blocking a little bit for C2 multimodal map. And the general case for C2 maps uh, was a result of Martens, Mello, and Van Steen. Look, the, the difference of the, this result of, uh, and this one, this is for a multimodal. So in this case, the, all the critical points have to be a turning point like that. And uh, in the second one, okay, you, you can allow the, this kind of map, this kind of critical can be happen. Okay, so for non-flat, C2 non-flat map, there are no wonder intervals. But the, the, the picture is completely different for map with discontinuity. So indeed, we don't know much about the existence or not of wonder interval for map with discontinuity, even for the simplest case, that is the, the contract in Lorentz map. 
uh, you know, we know that uh, this map can have wandering interval, but the, the example of wandering interval that we have is uh, associated to so-called uh, cherry flows, cherry attractors. So this is a very particular one, and in this case, we understand very much. So, but uh, uh, the question is, all the wandering interval that appears for this kind of map is a uh, cherry attractor, so this is an uh, open question, and uh, several people try how to prove or disprove this, but uh, f until now it's not, uh, <laughs> we cannot say almost, uh, we can say almost nothing about this. So even for the case of infinite renormalizable map, we don't know much about this. Only a, a few uh, results with a very restricted combinatory or something like that. So as we don't know if there are a uh, wonder interval or not, this, uh, the strategy to uh, prove the existence of uh, the finiteness of attraction must be very different. So, uh, in 2000, uh, Kellen and his student, uh, Saint Pierre, uh, proved the, that for, un, for the contracting Lorentz map, non flat contracting Lorentz map, we, we can have at most one uh, non periodic. Uh, Attractor. Indeed, they sh uh, they, uh, the results say also that uh, if you have a periodic attractor, so, so uh, indeed the, uh, you have three cases, one periodic attractor, attractor. In this case, if, if this map has one, only one periodic attractor, the base we attractor uh, we have we have full measure, Lebesgue full measure, so we attract almost every point. The second case is two periodic attractor, and so the, the but in this case the union of the, the base of these two periodic attractor cover almost all the interval, and the third case is no periodic attractor, and in this case. The theorem say that the, in this case there exists only one attractor that's not periodic, and the, the base of attraction uh, cover most of the intervals. This is the result of Keller. For this, sorry, for this proof, they use uh, some kind of induced map in the Hofbauer Keller Tower. It's a very complicated uh, stuff and very particular for this, this kind of map. They use a lot of, in this uh, result, a lot of uh, the prop that this map uh, preserves orientation and a lot of the combinatory of this, kind, this specific kind of map. So, uh, two years ago, in a joint work with Paulo, uh, with Brandão and Palis, we uh, generalize this kind of result with a, a, a totally different strategy. Our result is completely different for the, the our method is completely different for the Keller and the uh, Saint-Pierre one. And uh, we, we show that uh, if, you, if your, your map has negative Schwarzman derivative, it's not, uh, it's not necessary to be non flat in this case. And uh, you can always uh, prove that uh, uh, we have only a finite number of attractors, okay? And uh, the attractor has these properties. We can also give a classification of the attractor. So I write down only a partial part of the result. So this was the former result. And uh, Yes, but in this case, uh, the bound is not very uh, sharp in this uh, work. It's bounded by two, the number of critical values. Critical values. This is the critical values of 
of f. Okay, you can refine it, but uh, essentially it's this kind of model. The, the, uh, this is the number of critical volume because now we have this continuum, so the number of critical points and critical value may be different. Why do you say it's not sharp? Uh, because now we have a sharper result. <laughs> So it's uh, because uh, uh, maybe I can talk a little bit later about it. But let me talk about uh, how we can get out the negative uh, derivative condition. To do that, we have to be careful because the the Schwarzschild derivative is very good co to control the distortion, but uh, also have some have other implication like a negative Schwarzschild derivative bound the number of periodic points. So uh, if you don't have uh, uh, the condition of negative Schwarzschild derivative, it's easy to construct a map with infinite main attractor, like that periodic attractor, like that. So it's uh, infinite. Huh? And uh, it's easy also to construct a map that uh, maybe the map has a, a tractor, like this, in this case, a periodic one. But uh, here, there are no attractor in this part of the, the interval. Yeah, because this is the identity, and the map goes there. And so there are no attractors here. So the, the thing's a bit com, uh, com, more complicated. So we have to, to deal with uh, this kind of problem. Sorry, so what's the assumption that excludes this possibility? OK, uh, for instance, if you say that the number of periodic points is uh, with period n is bounded. So what was the assumption that you had in the field? Here, I'm going to show you. OK. Which one? This one? Yeah. No, but this one is uh, with negative Schwarzschild derivative. So I'm going to show another one. So for this one, it's finite because the negative Schwarzschild derivative. OK. But uh, <coughs> so let me only to emphasize the notation. This is the, the union of the basis of attraction of periodic orbits. And uh, here is this period. This is the pre-periodic uh, points, okay? And uh, let me only comment that this is a periodic in York in a little bit uh, larger sense. It's a periodic like your. For instance, you have, you can have a map like that, okay? So this. Uh, So this is the critical point, the end is the discontinued, but the image of this, the, the critical point is here. So this, this is really not a, a periodic, uh, the, we have almost every point in, of the, uh, every point in the, this interval here goes, is attracted to this point to C, but C itself is not a, Invariant. So, but uh, in this case, we can say that this is a periodic point for the left or for the right. So, for me, in, in this more general context, the context with this continuum, we may say that a, a point is periodic by if the point is periodic by the left or the right side. Okay. So, this is a result of. Uh, uh, Vargas, Edson Vargas, and, and Sebastian von String for 2004. And uh, they proved that for C3 maps, but uh, here they are not assumed the negative trust and derivative is a C3 map. We can, uh, we can have only a finite number of non periodic attractors. You see? They, and, uh, OK, and uh, in, here is the, the, base, the union of the basin of attractor for 
periodic or periodic-like orbits. And this is the set of pre pre periodic points. You know, you can have something like uh, that. OK. This, this kind of uh, point here is included in this set. And OK, if you take out these other things, what is remain for Lebesgue almost uh, every point is a finite uh, uh, number of attractor and the basin attract almost every point that is not in these two sets. More than that, as the result of blocking new bits, the omega limit is exactly the attractor for most of the points of the base. More, we have also a classification of the attractor. The, 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 this attractor can be, uh, OK, it is not, a, not good here, because this is included in this one. So forget this first one. This, uh, in this case, is a cycle of interval and uh, the, uh, a counter set with this type. So this, you can erase this, the first case here. The first case here is included in this part. OK. And uh, so uh, as uh, we are assuming that we can have this continuum, we can say that a map is uh, non-flat by, by being non-flat for one side and the other. In this case, the, the, the degree of the criticality may be different. This is only what I'm saying here. So it's not important. Let's go through that. And uh, so uh, I only want to define here the critical value. OK, they have this critical set. Uh, because uh, our result can, in our result, you can have a, a point that is not, uh, this point can be discontinuous, but not, uh, the derivative may not be 0 there. So this is all talk about this. Or the, you can also have a point that uh, the map is uh, piecewise C2, but so we can have some points that derivative is not very good in that point. You can have the first derivative one, but not the second one. So all this kind of uh, stuff is uh, put in as the label of a critical point, OK? And so, but we are assumed that the number of critical or non-regular points is finite. Outside this is a C2 diffeomorphism. So the critical value will be the limit from the right and, and for the left of these points. OK? So the result is this one. If we have a piecewise situ map, OK, and uh, uh, the number of non-periodic attractor is bounded by the number of uh, critical value. So this, uh, this result, the, we bound by this one, is far better than the first uh, result. And uh, again, for this non-periodic, so you, we have the, the, the points that is attracted for periodic or periodic like, like uh, or the points that uh, is pre-periodic, and OK. The points that are not pre-periodic and not for the uh, attract uh, in the base of periodic attractors go to one of these attractors, and more than that, for almost every point here, the the omega limit is exact the attractor, and uh, okay, again, you can <laughs> erase the first uh, item. So what we have we have is that. Uh, a, this attractor either is a cycle of interval or a counter set. In this case, the counter set will be uh, the omega limit of a critical 
points for the left of the right is the same as the omega limit of a critical value for some c in this set. The wonder interval will be attracted to this kind of uh, attractor. So if you for if you have a wonder interval in, and you may have a wonder interval for this kind of set of maps, and what we can show that this wonder interval, the omega limit of this wonder interval, will be one of these attractors will be, sorry, will be the omega limit of some, exactly the omega limit of some critical point. Uh, so, uh, let me talk a little bit about the step of this, uh, of these results. And, uh, The first step is uh, a kind of dichotomy, okay? So what we stood to prove this result is uh, the, the place in the interval that is not visited by critical points. The, the idea is, suppose that you look for your map and there are some interval that for every iterate of this map, the critical orbit don't go inside of this interval. <laughs> so in this case, if you look for the first return map to this interval, the branch will be big, and the first return map is, will look like some, something like that. If you work a little bit more and uh, uh, take this interval, you can sh show that the, you take this interval as a nice interval, you can do that. So the, the first return map will be some kind of uh, full induced Markov map. And uh, if you have some good distortion, some proper, some good distortion property. We, you can show that uh, this this kind of dichotomy that for uh, almost every point in the interval, in this interval, or the omega limit is is the is outside the interval, go outside, or the omega limit will be the whole interval. So, but if the omega limit is the whole interval, the the second uh, option here. So this, uh, this point is attracted to a cycle of interval. So it's easy to show that if the, if the omega limit, the interior of the omega limit of a, a point is not empty, the omega limit is exact a cycle of interval. More than that, uh, the number of cycle of interval are bounded by the number of critical points because inside in the interior of all, uh, each cycle of interval, you must have a critical point there. And uh, two cycles of, of interval are disjoint or are the same. So, so in, if you get the, sorry, if you are in the second uh, item here, you say, ah, so this, this interval, belongs to the basin of a tractor of some cycle of interval. So what we, we want to study is the points that is not in the base of a tractor of periodic points and the points that is not inside the base of a tractor of cycle of interval. So uh, the, the idea is to play with this dichotomy to show our uh, result and the second Using the, the, this dichotomy, it's not uh, difficult to prove the second uh, step that uh, for almost every point that is not in the basin of attraction of a periodic orbit, is not pre periodic and is not in the basin of attraction of cycle of interval, okay? 
for almost every point like that, the omega limit must be uh, inside the, the, the closure of the critical orbit or the critical values. So from step one to step two is easy. The, 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 the difficult point is the step one. In the case uh, that you, you have a negative Schwarzschild derivative, the step one indeed is not so difficult because the Schwarzschild derivative helps you very much in this case. So the idea is to take a very small, you can split your f former interval in very small part and look for the first return map to this interval. So the, this will be uh, like that and uh, with uh, a good distortion property so you can prove the step one for this kind of. But in the case that you don't have a negative Schwarzschild derivative, this is the, the step one is the big problem. So for proof the step one, in particular, we show that uh, uh, you, you may have a uh, wonder interval, but first we have to show that uh, the omega limit of uh, a wonder interval don't intersect, must be inside the, the closure of the, the critical orb. So, for proof in the, in, in the case that we don't have negative trust and derivative, first we have to show that uh, the omega limit of any wonder interval is inside the closure of this. So we have to ha need some uh, beginning control of the wonder interval. And the, as, after that, you will play a lot of uh, tricks to to get the first step. So the first step with negative Schwarzschild derivative is not so difficult, but without it, it's the most difficult part of the result. The second step is, comes easily for the first one. And uh, the third step, it's not so difficult uh, for the case of, for C2 case, the idea is you modify your maps and uh, apply the, the, the second step to your former map and the modify one and compare this kind of things and get this third step. But f in this case, for, for if you, your map have negative Schwarzschild derivative and you want to, to make a deformation of it, it's very hard. So, uh, in this, these two papers, in the first case, the, the paper of negative Schwarzschild derivative, the first step was very easy. Oh, not so very easy, but easy. But the third uh, step was very hard. And in the second case, this changed. So this, for map, C2 maps, the, the third step is not so uh, difficult. And here, it's not the third one, it's a fourth step, and uh, this uh, is to, to prove the transitivity and also to, also to classify the, the, the type of attractor. Let me, before I finish, I'm almost over the time, uh, let me say uh, two things that we don't know yet that the, this uh, let me come back, that if this kind of attractor is minimal, it's a minimal set, this appears in the, the result of uh, Liu Beach and Block and Liu Beach and also uh, Vargas and Van String. Let me go back. So this is a minimal set. But to prove this, they use very much uh, this, the kind of distortion control that they, they, they something like a period bond or something like that. So this not, and uh, we bypass this kind of uh, approach. So it's it's an open question if in, in our case this uh, this map are minimal. Okay, and uh, okay, uh, I'm going to stop here.